When any casting director reads a script, they're also writing at the same time who they imagine in the role. We'll read a script and we'll come together and very often our first instinct ends up eventually getting the role. It's a fun game to play. Other times, we could, have, we could think of 200 people and the last person we think of gets right. the role. It's a very complicated process and it will take as long as we have to do it. So in television, you have a very short period of time. We work on an eight-day schedule. So you have to do your best work in a short period of time, and I think that's the challenge of casting television. Keep each episode as well acted and stories as well told right. as we can. Am I ever going to meet Dr. House? <sighs> well, you might run into him at the movies or on a bus. Is he a good man? He's a good doctor. We did the pilot a lot of people would say backwards. backwards. It's a credit to, to Universal NBC and to Fox because they loved this script so much and they loved the character so much that they were willing to cast around Hugh until yes. we found the actual Dr. House character because they wanted to make this show so badly. It was a very unique show. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it was the year of the ensemble. It was Desperate Housewives, it was Grey's Anatomy, and it was uh, CSI New York. So everybody was looking for a 40-something guy <laughs> surrounded by an ensemble. Mm -hmm. So, it was a competitive year. Are you Dr. House? Thankfully, no, I'm Dr. Chase. Dr. House is the head of diagnostic medicine. We were two weeks from shooting, and Brian Singer had just said, no more British people, no more people with accents, they can't do the American accent. Amy had always wanted to work with Hugh, and so his name came up. His family was visiting him, and he said to his wife, who was in the car with it, sort of running, I gotta quickly run inside into the hotel and put myself on tape for this American pilot. And she said, well, you're, you need to comb your hair, you're not shaven, you know, I don't know how you're gonna get the job that way. And he said, I'm just gonna go wing it. Another actor shot him doing one scene, that was it. I was expecting you in my office 20 minutes ago. Really? That's odd because I had no intention of being in your office 20 minutes ago. By the time we got it, we were uncertain if we were gonna find an actor to play this role. Mm -hmm. It was so daunting mm -hmm. and so difficult. So Stephanie and I watched, watched the tape and we said, He's pretty good, and yeah. he looks really handsome with the scruff and the hair. I think it was the first time, too, that we actually saw somebody, like, breathe life into the role in the way that everyone had been looking for. Don't you gotta grab my cane and stop me from leaving? So we gave it to Brian, all of us, without saying that he was a yeah. British actor. It was very, very clear when the right person read the role. And to top it all off, Hugh did not know it was the lead of the show. He thought Wilson was more the lead of the show and that the House character, being somebody that was so unlikable, was the sidekick. Dr. House, the only reason why I don't fire you is because your reputation is still worth something to this hospital. Excellent. We have a point of agreement. You're not gonna fire me. Omar Epps met Brian Singer in New York. He was the second person to meet on the role and it took the entire process of reading other people and figure things out to finally get him to test that last day. But we always kept Omar in you our sights. You wouldn't sights. let it go. You were like, it's described this way as this character with a past, and this is who it should be. I can't just break into someone's house. Isn't that how you got into the Felker's home? And you kept calling them, and it obviously turned out for the best. Cameron, I need you for a couple of hours. What's up? When you break into someone's house, it's always better to have a white chick with you. And then with Jennifer, she came in and she was so delightful, and she just was Cameron. If House is right, no harm. If he's wrong, I've given a dying woman a couple days' help. False if there was any other type available, I would have given her that. Jesse's role was. He was supposed to be this, you know, rich kid. We read everyone. Everyone. Thing but until him, he wasn't the right person. Differential diagnosis, people. If it's not a tumor, what are the suspects? Why couldn't she talk? Aneurysm, stroke, or some other ischemic syndrome. Get her a contrast MRI. We also had a very hard time getting a lot of actors to say the medical jargon and make it sound like it was fluid and they were really doctors. If this is the best team in the world, the most elite group of doctors, certainly the people playing them were gonna have to say those medical terms. And there were a lot of people that couldn't. And then, you know, four years later, we ended up finding more people who could say it in season four when we added more cast members. Sounds like fibromyalgia. Sounds like you don't work for House. Diagnosis that provides neither an explanation nor a cure is by definition not a diagnosis. The American College of Rheumatology would disagree. It adds a definite larger layer onto playing a character, that you're defined by your profession.
So you have to buy that they're that profession. It's obviously mentally ill. Pain's probably psychological. It is not a sign of mental illness to want to be pain-free. It is if your solution is sucking on a tailpipe. On a regular episode, we get the script. We read it. <laughs> <laughs> we figure out who's in it. We figure out how many guest stars, how many co-stars. Is there a single lead of the episode? We talk about each page, what elements are involved in those pages, from stunts to hair and makeup to prosthetics. Everything that impacts our department will come out and we'll take notes. 90% of the time, our guest stars yeah. are large roles and are as large as our series regular. Yeah, there's only one or two usually that are... A season that yeah. aren't as large. So I think now it's a little easier because once the show started airing, actors in the industry have been able to see how wonderful those roles are and what that can do for their career. And so the people that come in commit to thinking about the role. Sometimes they'll do research on the internet, thinking about what the character would be, knowing that they're not just coming in and reading lines, but they're really an important central character to the show. Yeah, like with Lori Petty, she researched what it was to have her disease. You know, she really went for it and committed to it. With or without these drugs, I don't have a long time. Sometimes the actors have to have a prosthetic made of their head, of their arm, of, of their chest, and they have to go get dipped, as we call it. Like Pruitt's episode with Pruitt Taylor Vince, he had to be in a fat suit. Well, the fat suit was enormous, and it had to have its own air conditioner. One boy, one season, had to have leeches put on his body. And that was a very daunting yeah. episode for us to cast because not only did we have to have a very young teenage boy who was a good actor, but we had to say to all of the actors who came in, we are going to be doing this practically. Would you be comfortable with that? It's a lot of weight for them because they have to really commit to the story, whether they're in a bald cap, whether they have something flying off of them or their eyes are bleeding and they have to go get fitted for contacts for the role. It's a lot. Why aren't you saying anything? What's wrong? I keep coming back to this episode with BK Ken and this young actress because she just did such a wonderful human job of portraying this young girl and having us really sort of feel for her and what the trials and tribulations of her life were as, as opposed to also being sick. That one rings really true to me. You know what they did last year? They took these photos of me for the yearbook, but it wasn't. It was for this website, making fun of me, calling me a pig. Let's just make you better. Every year at the beginning of the season, I make a list. I'm like, in my dream world, I will work with these actors. And every year I would put Jelko's name on that same post-it and tape it to my computer. And every year I, didn't, I would take it off and not get to cross it off. Well, this year I get to cross it off. I'm sick and I want to know why. There's Jelko, you know, as this guy who just wants an answer, and that exchange is unbelievable. I mean, it's two people who are, are masters at their craft going head to head. Her kidneys are failing. You give her those drugs, she'll be dead by the time they get the cuffs on you. I need my answer. If you didn't have Jelko Ivanic there, like who else would be able to be that skill of an actor to make that thing come to life? And for me, that was just a dream come true. I think that the addition of Michael Weston in those first couple of episodes was, was very interesting too. He's amazing and I just watched those episodes come together and just laughed. I feel like an idiot. Because he added such humor to that role and it was funny on the page the way that David and the writers wrote it, but he just added just something extra special. It was a truth that mattered to him and a truth that mattered to her. Why did it matter to you? First of all, stop saying a truth. There is only one truth. May be true for you. Janelle is a huge Dave Matthews fan, and she was the one who put forth that idea, and it ended up being a wonderful episode. Stephanie's been wanting to work with most Steph and Jelko Ivanek for many years, and she made those episodes happen. And I got to cast Meatloaf, which makes me happy because I grew up with his music, and Colleen Camp, an actress who I worked with and known for 20 years, ended up playing his wife. And I have to say, when I was a casting associate, and I first met Colleen, the last thing I would have said to her is, in 10 or 12 years, I'm going to cast you as the wife of Meatloaf. <laughs> but how great is that in season five? You're still with me. 
Where the hell else am I gonna go? For the smaller roles that are like nurses and anesthesiologists and heart surgeons and all that stuff, we keep records of who we've hired in the past. We like the world of the hospital. We like to bring people back. We make sure they're in the same part of the hospital as they were. <laughs> if you were in the OR, you stay in the OR. If you're in the ER, you stay in the ER. And I have, if you were a heart surgeon, you can't be a brain surgeon now. Uh, so <laughs> I try, I try to keep you. track of all of that stuff. We often will see 30 people for a very small role and we're very, very um, careful about who we choose. You know, we like it to look different. We like yeah. it to, to also believably be people that would, you would find in New Jersey. Feels good. Exactly when did New Jersey run out of horny 17-year-old boys? So we just try to keep it as fresh as possible. We don't want it to look like any other show on television. You've been plucked and set into a hospital, right. and these are the people that work there, and these are the people that are patients there. So how are you feeling? Much better, thanks. Are you Dr. House? I thought he was a he, but no. Thank him for me. We love what we do. I mean, we're very blessed to have careers that we love.